What's up guys? This is Adit from Tech is Easy. And today I'm going to show you five Google Form tricks which everybody should know. So Google Forms has various uses from creating a registration form or an online quiz or even a survey. You can use this for many things and in today's video I'm going to show you five tricks which will enhance your experience using Google Forms. So before we start, you'll need to know the basics on how Google Forms works. So I've already made a video on that and you can just click on the top right of the screen. So let's get started. The first trick is relate to responses. One of the most annoying things with getting many responses is just organizing all of the data. So to make this simpler, what you can do is just go to the responses tab. Then you can see that there's a green button over here to create a spreadsheet. So when you click on this, you can link all of your responses to a Google spreadsheet. So I'll just show you how to do it. You have to click on it and then you can either create a new one or you can just select an existing spreadsheet. So I'll create a new one for now and you can rename it over here and just click on create. So now it'll link all of the responses onto the spreadsheet. And over here you can see the three responses. So over here you have the time, the email address, the score and each of the questions. So this makes it extremely easy to go through all of the responses and you can easily organize all of the data. So if you want to copy paste all the email addresses, it's extremely simple. And to share the spreadsheet with more people, you can just click on share. So now the second thing what you can do with all of your responses is save it as a PDF. So I'll just go back to the form. Then I'll click on the three dots over here and click on print all responses. So over here you'll get a preview of how I look. And over here you can see the email ID and the answers to each question. After that, just save the destination as print to PDF and then you can save it as a PDF. So this makes it extremely simple to go through all of your responses and it saves you from the time and effort of opening Google Forms, then going through the responses tab and then going through it. The second trick which I'm going to show you is using extensions on Google Forms. So if you just click on the three dots on the top right, and you click on add-ons. Over here you can see that they have many extensions which you can add to your Google Form. So we're going to be using Form Limiter. And using this you can set a limit on the maximum responses on a form. So let's say you have an event which only allows 50 people. Then what you can do is install this add-on and after that set a limit to 50. So then after the 50th person has submitted the form, this form will automatically shut. And they also have other features like opening and closing the form on a certain day and time. So I'll just show you how it works quickly. You'll first have to search for form limiter. So this is its name and then click on install. Just click on continue and they'll ask for some permission. You'll have to give that to them. So I've gone back to the home screen. Then you'll find an add on icon on the top right. So if I click on that and I go to form limiter, then you'll find an option called set limit. Sometimes this won't come the first attempt, so you can just reload the page and then follow the same steps and you'll find set limit over here. So over here they have a pop-up on the bottom right and over here I can select what type of limit I want to set. Whether I want the limit to be based on the date and time or the number of responses. So these two are the most popular ones. So let's say I set it on number form responses. So I've selected that. Then this will stop accepting form responses when responses are greater than. So I'll add 50. So now when the 50th person tries to submit the form, they'll see this message which is written over here. And you can type anything that you want. Then you can also decide whether you want to email the form owner when all of the submissions are closed. And after you made all the changes, just click on save and enable. And now it's saved. The same way you can change the limit based on date and time. And then you can again select a due date and time. So this is basically how it works. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So the third trick is adding sections and conditional formatting to your form. So what this means is that based on a person's answer, you can decide the next question which you'd like to show them. So over here you can already see that I've added some sections, but I'll just show you from scratch. So this is a brand new form. And now to add a section, just click on this icon over here. So, so this is to add a section and over here it's written section one of two and two of two. So now based on the questions, you can decide whether a person should go to the next section 
or just send the form. So right now, I'll just add a simple question. And over here, I've just put the responses, yes or no. Now in section two, I'll just add a question saying reason. So now what I can do is depending on the answer, let the person submit the form or send them to section two. So to do this, I'll go back to the first question. After that, click on the three dots and then click on go to section based on answer. So now you can decide if a person selects yes, then if you want them to go to the next section, submit the form or go to section one or two. So now I'll click on submit the form. And now if a person selects no, I'll send them to the next section, which is reason. And I'll just make this a paragraph answer. So now I'll just show you how this works. So I'm going to preview this form and the question is subscribed. So if I say yes, and now it's submitted. Now I'll again preview the form. This time I select no. And over you can see the changes. Under reason, they'll ask me an answer. So I can just type anything I want. And only after writing this, I can submit it. And if you want, you can make these questions required. So someone has to enter an answer for this and then submit it. So this is how sections and conditional formatting works. So for the fourth trick, we're going to be adding a timer to the form. So again, you'll have to use the add-ons. And what you can do is set a time limit within which a person must submit the form. And if they don't, it'll automatically get submitted for them. So again, just click on the three dots, then go to add-ons. After that, you'll have to select Quilgo timer. So just click on it and then click on install. Again, just give them the permissions and now it's installed. So I'll just show you how it works. So this is how it'll look. You'll have the questions over here and on top there's a timer. So I'll just go back to the home screen and now again, click on the add-ons icon on the top right. Then over here, you'll find two options. So form limiter is what we'd used earlier. And this is the new one, Quilgo timer. Now click on configure. And again, there's a pop-up on the bottom right. So now just click on great, create my account. So it'll take you to their website and you just have to create an account. So this is completely free. So after you've created your account, go to the home page and over here, click on create tests. So you'll have to enter the email IDs of all the respondents. After that, you can decide when you want the respondents to conduct the test. So anytime, or you can select a specific date and time. Then over here to set a time limitation for your test, enter the time limit, which you want. So I'll just put three minutes. After that, they have some additional options like auto closing the form or hiding the timer and some other ones. So I'll just click on auto close the form and now I'll click on create. So over here, you can see that the form has come. The email ID is techiseasy1 at gmail.com. And now to send it to the respondent, just click on copy URL. So now it's copied and you can send it via email to the person. Then you can also make this link public. So if I just click on public form link, then this will be a universal link. And if I just click on copy link, now it's copied. Now I'll just open it in a new tab. So you'll have to go to your email ID and then start the form from there. So I'll quickly do that. So I've gone to my email ID and I'll just click on open your link. And over here, they've said that you have a time limit of three minutes. So if I open the form, so over here you can see that the same questions have come, but on the top, there's a time limit. So this is basically how it works. And now the last and final trick is creating an auto grading test. So for this, just click on the settings icon over here and then click on quizzes. So over here, you can make this a quiz. So just click on this button over here to enable it. And over here, they've said that you can assign point values to questions and allow auto grading. Then if you want the respondents to see the missed questions, correct answer points. So you can select all of this and then just remember to click on save. So now to add points, just click on the question. After that, click on answer key. So over here, I have to select the correct answer. So obviously it's going to be yes. And now I can select the number of points I want to give. So I've put 50 and now done. So now I'll just show you how it works. If I click on the preview button over here. So over here, you can see that the first question 
has 50 points and if I select yes and then if I view score I can see that I got 50 out of 50 but now I'll select no and then let's see what happens so I've selected no and now if I see my score you can see that it's 0 out of 50 and they've also given the correct answer which is yes so this will save your time of going through all of the answers and the best part is that you can again link all of the responses to a sheet and you'll get all of the scores over there. So I hope these 5 tricks helped you and if it did don't forget to hit that subscribe button.